Hello, this is Gwydion, and this might be a little bit of a longer video, but I'm, I'm trying to show off a number of programs, starting with RPG Sounds, which is a Kickstarter that I backed that is now available for free on Steam. So I encourage you to check it out. I will put links to where to find it in Steam in the video below. But I also want to show off uh, Fantasy Grounds and um, some of the features of Fantasy Grounds. So, um, so what I'm starting with is... I wanted to create a Pathfinder 2 adventure for my players. And um, I listened to a podcast from the Glass Cannon on Crypt of the Ever Everflame. And Jason Bowman, right when Pathfinder 2 was being playtested, um, he ran Glass Cannon podcast guys through Crypt of the Ever Everflame, which is actually a Pathfinder 1 original Pathfinder adventure. I think it was one of the first, if not the first, ever created. And Jason Bowman wrote it. So I decided to purchase the um, Pathfinder 1 version on Fantasy Grounds because it's available. And then with the um, help of some extensions that allow you to open a, any module in any rule set, uh, I opened it in Pathfinder 2, kept all the story entries, and then basically converted all the monsters to, um, instead of level 1, I made this level 3 because that's what my party is uh, right now. And I went ahead and converted everything, line of sight, all the maps. Uh, I'm still working on the last map, line of sight, but I figured I'd do this video now. And um, I created a whole soundboard in RPG Sound. So let's just kind of jump in and I'll try to go through it relatively quickly. Um, this is the PDF. I, I purchased this off of Paizo as well. Um, so if you go to the uh, introduction, this is kind of the first thing that happens as you go into town. And you can kind of see, I'll blow this up a little bit, but it talks about the bells tolling. You're in the center of town. So what I did, so this is my uh, RPG sounds player. So I created, I haven't done much with this yet, but I'm starting to create um, individual soundboards for players. So like I have different spells for uh, the cleric. So if the cleric does that cure light wounds, I can, wow, that's loud. At least it's loud in my uh, ear. I'm going to turn that down just a bit. Um, so you can do the soundboards there, but also... Turn that off. What I then did is created all of the entries for all of the stories and, and all of the sections that I wanted to play. So what I thought I would do here, and I'm still playing around with the idea, is you know, I brought in the town bell, and some of these are straight out of the um, DLC content on Steam from RPG Sounds. So they have a number of DLC packs available. And then as you can see over here, I have all my own, I have thousands of sounds myself from tabletop audio, from Plate Now Games, Ambient Realms, um, a whole host of sources. But what I thought I would do here, and I might have to mess with the volume, but um, you know, I have a little bell tolling as I'm talking to the players and reading the opening, a little bit of crickets, town life, Crickets, it's middle of the day, so I might turn that down a little bit. But you can obviously adjust all the volume sliders, and then and then maybe I'll pause the town bell and talk a little bit more, and then stop that when I get through that section. So then, I, you know, I'm, not, I'm trying not to go through the entire thing for you, but then the party basically leaves town, and they get into their first fight on the way to a crypt. Um, they fight orcs. And it's not important, the orcs are illusory, but uh, for now, I created this um, journey to the crypt. Uh, I guess I saved that. No, I don't want to save that. Oh, I guess maybe I'll have to. I'll just discard the changes. So now I get to the journey to the crypt. So they'll be walking through the forest. Um, so I may start with a little forest ambiance as they're walking. Um, and just maybe I'll turn it down a little bit just to have it as a little bit more background. And then when they fight the orcs, I can play the entire list if I want. And the orcs, you know, maybe are talking to them and saying something they can't really understand, but, uh, and then maybe I pause that after a little bit, because that might be a little bit uh, too much. Turn it down a bit and kind of walk the players through the fight. And the fight's over, I'll stop that section. And there's a little bit more, um, they uh, after their fight they uh they um break camp for the night and they might have an encounter with some wolves so ah that's interesting i guess i have to I, hopefully i can just discard it and leave it the way it is i think it will 
And so Eyes in the Dark is that entry. And I tried to I tried to create these so it's easy for me to understand what section I'm in based on the story. So maybe they start their campfire and, and I talk to them about you know, what they want to do. They're doing a little role playing, healing. Um, and then, you know, they start hearing in the distance a little bit of wolves howling. Um, and they may or may not have an encounter. Um, if they do, then, you know, I can kind of stop the campfire possibly and, and have a little bit of wolf biting sound effects. And so that, um, it's kind of how I thought I'd run that section. Um, I'll show you the maps once I get to it, but right now I'm not, uh, even in the crypt yet. That's, that's all going to be done through some basic maps that, um, I'm going to use for that section. Treacherous Hillside. I went ahead and created, um, at that point, I think it says they're, um, starting to rain. So a cold rain starting to fall and the ground is, uh, slick and treacherous. Oh, sorry. Go back to RPG sounds. And so I thought here, I do have some rock slides, but I thought I'd start with some forest sounds. And then I set the thunder to go off on occasion. So I created a, I created a delay of, a, of um, anywhere from zero to four seconds. So it'll, it'll play through as they're, again, walking through the forest, the rain's coming. It'll play through this whole section and it'll wait a little bit. And, uh, you know, maybe, maybe they slip a little bit on the rocks. So I have a little bit of sound effects there if I need to. And again, I might not even use all these, but, um, you know, it's, I think it's fun to kind of have them ready to go. Then they get to the crypt. So they'll be um, outside the crypt entrance. And uh, if you read the outside, um, where is it? Uh, so right outside, there's a pair of horses and... The uh, horses are dead. There's some corpses um, that are lying outside and talks about a swarm of flies. So honestly, what I did is I pulled in two of my fly sounds because I figured I could overlap them. And um, in this case, I had this one just droning on and this one will replay um, anywhere from zero to five seconds. So literally just hit that and kind of does a little bit of back and forth. I have this one a little bit more on the left side and this a little bit more on the right. So it just uh, kind of give a interesting ambiance as uh, as the players are kind of deciding what they want to do with these uh, bodies. So I might not overuse that, but I'll play it a little bit. And then they get into the uh, entrance. So there's wooden doors um, into this uh, entry hall. So again, it's one entry hall. So I named that one entry hall. And if you if you read the beginning, it does talk about the uh, heavy doors swinging open faint light outside. So what I decided to do, so I did create this map. Uh, I shouldn't say created. I'm sorry. It was already in fantasy grounds, but I created all the uh, line of sight and occluders. So, um, I actually should probably create a door there, but as they come in here, um, they'll be able to step into the crypt. And as the doors open, I will kind of give them a little sound of freaky door open these big heavy doors and then maybe start with a little ambiance um this little ambiance of the crypt and then i'll read them the entry as that sound is playing and talk about the bodies and then as they investigate the bodies these human skeletons will come to life um so i might i might pause the uh I certainly will pause the creaky door which i already did i might pause the audience and then i've got got some skeleton sounds i, I didn't overdo this but I figured I'd play a little bit of that while they're in the battle. And at the end of the battle, I don't have a great mail scream, but very faintly, they're supposed to hear a wail in the very, in the distance. So I kind of have this as low as I can. Um, and that's going to be my, my uh, version of the whale. So they'll kind of come through um, here and let's see where it goes from the story. Maze of Pits. So some of this is line of sight. You can see the stairs go up. The player can't really see it until they go on the other side. And then they go up above. And they come down here and they get to a door. So they'll open the door, line of sight. And then there's a number of pits here that they might end up stepping in. You can kind of see them as I hover over. But if they step in there, then I'll be able to tell them they, they fell into a pit. Um, and here's my... Oh, I should probably stop that. Go to the maze of pits. So if they do step on one of the pit traps, 
and I can give them a, a little sound of the trap opening and, and talk to them. There's also several switches in here. As they get through the um, the entire uh, section, you can see here it talks a little bit about um, there's S's on the map. These switches have to be pulled. So again, I have these set up. I may or may not use them all, but here's kind of a little locked sound. That's my little sound for a switch as the player throws the switch. Not perfect, but it works. Get where I found that. So they'll continue, um, and uh, they'll continue, and once they get through this room, they'll go through this door, open that door, and who knows which direction they'll go, but what does this say? Four. Wailing, oh, Wailing Survivor. So the Wailing Survivor is in this room down here. So let's just say they come down here, open the door, they get that fixed a little bit, and they come in here, and there's a soundboard for the survivor that immediately shoots a crossbow. I don't know why I put two of these in. I can probably get rid of one. I think I have one that's a loading sound, and then one that's a shooting sound. Yeah. So I might say, hey, he loads the crossbow, you hear him, and then he fires. And then he's wailing a little bit louder here. So, um, anyway. I, I thought that would be a, a fun way to play that. Um, they go into another chamber that has a hungry beetle. So the beetle is on top of this corpse, and I, I think, basically, you don't know that right away. You just see the body. But um, I'm going to try to play this, that the beetle is kind of feeding on it. You can't quite tell, but you do hear it. So what I was envisioning as they came over and opened this door into the beetle room is they would hear, they would hear like this bug crawling. And they wouldn't quite know what it is, but I'll try to describe them. You hear some sound and the body moves a bit. And so I thought that'd be a fun. I'm, again, I'm trying not to overdo some of the sounds, but just give them enough to where it adds a little ambiance without hopefully being overpowering. I thought that was kind of a cool sound. All right. Then we get into shadowy shapes. So this one is a, there's a small fire in the center of this giving off some smoke. Um, and I think this is the one... Yeah, I had fun with this because I messed around with Fantasy Grounds is getting better with um, the ambient lighting. And you can see as I move here, I was able to create... If I scroll in... Now, it's pretty cool. I created this... Um, this is a static image, but I, I used some effects to make it appear that it's a, a fire that's smoldering. So I thought that was a cool use of um, some of the effects that you can use. And then I've got a little bit, you will battle a shadow in here. Um, so I think I just had a little bit of background ambiance. I didn't do too much. I believe this is a shadow potential battle. Yeah. And so in this one, I didn't, um, I didn't add a lot of combat sounds. I just wanted this one to play out as a, as a, a more of a, a somber, um, spooky ambiance as they're fighting these shapes that um, you know, are going to probably give them a lot of trouble. So let's see. Pause that. I won't go through all of these. Um, I think you get the idea. Uh, in fact, that's probably enough. Um, I've got a lot more as you just flip through rather than go back to the story. You guys get the idea. I've got a key pool. Um, with a fountain, actually, I do want to, I lied, I do want to show that one. I had fun with that a little bit, too. The fountain room is way up at the top. Pull them up there. So this is kind of neat. You know, not only do you have the water ambiance, and then if they do, this is a really deep 40-foot water pool. So you can see a little bit of the water, but I was able to make that come alive a little bit. And then if somebody does jump in, you can't really see but they can't see anywhere else out because now they're in basically a pit. Um, but um, you also, as you come into this room, because this is a fountain that's um, filling in or leading into the water. So might turn that down a little bit. Some of these are probably a little bit too loud right now, but I might turn that down a bit and you can hear the watering into 
emptying from the fountain into the room. So look, a lot, a lot more. There's a gauntlet. Um, that one I'll probably save. Um, there's like a blade trap. There's a golem that has a, a number of shields that he's going to be fighting them with. Um, there's a pillar that shoots numerous uh, arrows that I turned into spears. Um, this is a this is a um, skeleton battle. So this is one way that I've tried to. I don't remember if I have an additional. Actually, I can tell these are all one. But I did kind of create all of these to have an overlapping um, sound of the skeletons rising and the bones clacking. And these are supposed to be like um, flesh. You know, they have flesh that's like um, slipping off them. So I have some flesh sound in here. And I have that going on a delay so it's not constant. But I thought that was kind of a... That was fun. Crossroads... Um, Frog, little frog battles. There's like a dripping pool with frogs in there. Fungus that, um, if they're in this room, uh, they might face an electrical charge in the water. So I have them kind of walking into the room. You can kind of hear them walking. And then depending on what happens with the fungus, I can play everything. So they're walking through the water and this fungus gives off a spore that also gives an electrical charge and they might take a bunch of damage. Uh, cure wounds if they're in a pool. There's a trap that would cause fear and also might attract some bats from the next door room. Um, zombie battle. So again, I'm layering several different zombie sounds in here rather than just pulling in one, trying to get some diversity. So you have all these different sounds. You might, you know, maybe you pause one of them to give it a little bit different ambiance for a while. Um, so... I'm, that'll be a fun battle. Another catacombs with where the bats are if they don't run across them in another room. Um, guardian statues. So these massive statues are rolling towards the players. So I kind of combine these two sounds. Think of uh, these two huge statues. They're stone that, that basically slam towards the players and might knock them off a bridge. So I played both of these sounds kind of a combination of a door and a and a rolling on a track is how I envisioned it. And finally, Kassen's Tomb. This is kind of the big, massive battle at the end with um, not really zombies, but a couple of huge skeletons. So I kind of have a little bit of everything going. Um, so I probably have to tone that one down just a little bit. But um, yeah, and then maybe I'll pause some of this so that it's not constantly going um so maybe i'll pause some of this and just leave the ambiance after after the fight goes for a little while and then maybe even turn it down so so that's it i mean really simple um i you know i spent several hours today but i did pretty much all of this i got the conversion done all of the line of sight for this map um got all of the uh, encounters converted uh created the entire soundboard so Sorry, that was a little bit longer, um, probably than it needed to be, but um, hopefully that gives you an idea on how to use RPG sounds with your games. Um, so I hope it helped and leave a comment. Let me know if you liked it or disliked it and if you'd like to see other videos like this. So until next time, um, I will see you around, some of you around on the Fantasy Grounds forums.